Hey, my darlings, it's me, Michelle Visage, and welcome to another episode of Whatcha Packin'. And today we have the one and only Ms. Cracker. She's thin, white, and salty. Hi. <laughs> I love Michelle. I'm going to start this interview by asking a question about me. Okay. Only because it's something I wanted to know. Right. Did you sense at all how somewhat obsessed with you I was? I was hoping, but let me tell you, I was in West Africa for the collapse of a government, and that was less scary than standing before Michelle Visage. I admire you so much, I was like, Aww. please let me be right, I hope she really likes it. I know nothing about you, yeah, I lot. want to know about you. Yeah, and listen, she loves talking, so she would love to tell you about herself. She loves talking, but she doesn't love emoting. Oh yeah, my favorite emotion is... Where does so, that come from, do you think? Well, you know, I think it's from growing up in a very weird household, you know, obviously my weirdness comes from somewhere, and, uh, you know, my parents lived on the same property but in separate houses, so, like, Stop my... Stop there. Explain. My mom lived in her art studio where she did her thing. My dad lived in the house where he did his thing. So they were disconnected. Disconnected. Like a guest house would be her art studio. Yeah, different worlds, okay. completely different worlds, and it was sort of like, you know, in that environment, it's like you learn how to compartmentalize. You just explained it all in one paragraph. You're welcome. You spent a life viewing two people, not emoting and pulling back from each other. Right. And even if their true emotion was to be anger, yeah. disdain, yeah. Um, they weren't showing anything right. except separating yeah. from each other yeah. to not be together. That's right. So you are kind of stuck with this emotion of I'm not gonna give it up, not gonna give it up because you were taught how to hold it back. Yeah. You're weird and when I say weird, that's the highest compliment you're gonna get from me. Because the weird people, the people that are willing to march to the beat of their own drummer, are the people who not only succeed but have longevity. Yeah. It's the people that wanna fit in that we're bored with. Right. We want the people that are willing to dance and play and color in the margins. And you have to stop trying to live in the main space. Yeah, I think I learned that in a huge way here. Every time I did well, I looked around the room and I was like, oh Lord, I'm so different from everyone. I must be on the bottom. And those were the times that I was on the top when I had nothing in common with anyone else in the workroom. And I just had to learn to say, yeah, you're going to be different. And that is going to be a good thing. Celebrate that because you're so amazing. Thank you. You might have felt less than. And I think that you expressed that a few times on the main stage. Yeah. It was never the case. Okay. You were the only one who was doing it. Okay. And I know Rue must have told you that, you know, yeah. a few times in the walkthroughs. And I have to feel about myself the way Rue feels about me. And we have 20 minutes. Like, we got to get to faith in 20 minutes. I get it. It's changing yeah. a lifetime of beliefs oh, yeah. and mostly habits. Yeah. Now I think it should always be a rush to have faith in yourself. Even if you're not in a competition, if you're just out in the world. If you're out in the world, make it, give yourself 20 minutes and be like, I'm gonna love myself before I go to work today. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, because it's, it is an emergency. I love that, I yeah. agree. What was your experience like? In New York City, she's the comedy queen. And when I got here, suddenly I was a runway queen. And learning that the places that you're most scared of, that fear will fuel you to do, to do better. So. I ended up outperforming myself in the places that I was most afraid and underperforming in the, in the spots I was like, I have that in the bag. Do you and Aquaria have a little frenemy situation or are you friends back at home? Um, back at home, it's been back and forth. We were very close friends in a, in a time that I really enjoyed. She helped me so much. We drifted apart before the show for reasons that I don't understand. Did but you talk about it? On the competition, we were able to talk about it. We fought like animals. We hated each other. And then we let that burn off. And by the end, I'm like so grateful that we walked out of it. I, when I left, I was like, here's some things of mine that I know you like. Please bring us a crown. Oh, like, that's really it was a kind. Complete turn. And if, without this competition, we would have been stuck back where we were at home, where things had gone sour for reasons unspoken. You were saying here that you, back home, you're a comedy queen. I think you're more of an artsy queen, and I right. hate to label. Oh, I definitely was here in this competition. But me saying that is not me saying you're not funny. Yeah. Me saying that is more like you're quirky. 
yeah. with some punch lines. Yeah. And I think you should work all of that in. Yeah. Tell me about some of these looks you brought back here. Now start with this um, safety hazard okay. dress. Okay, well, I wanted to do a, a look that was something that would make people ashamed. You know, that people <laughs> would, I would walk around the corner and people would be like, ugh, what is she doing? Uh -huh. And so this is all made out of uh, traffic cones. And, you know, I love the sci-fi sort of Jetsons metropolis feeling. I laugh every time I see it, and so I know that it's doing what I want it's it to funny. do. It's funny, it's campy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one behind me, this beautiful patent leather type of. Yeah, it's just this like futuristic stewardess, um, airline hostess kind of feel. And it's part of the, Cracker has this Barbie woman uh, tendency and like that was dead center for me. So she's cute. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. But I'm really drawn to this kind of Miss Dior moment in the center. Yeah. She's lovely. I I love this. I have a very close friend um, who's a publisher, and he was like, "Come over. I want you to see this film, Dior and I." And I, at the time, was preparing to do a big competition, and. <laughs> I was watching this man who had done so much come apart under the pressure to be the most. The best. In eight weeks. And I was like, this is me right now. So this dress that spoke to me, I did a sort of homage to it. It's a little bit different. The cage is showing through, sort of the construction is showing through. I just wanted to capture that like really glorious moment under pressure. Do you so. make your own goods? For this competition, I made about half of them. So you sew? I sew. Great. Yeah. Doing the sewing challenges and being able to show that I can sew like this and that there, I can work with strange materials, which I've been doing since I was a little kid with my sister, that was, I think, my favorite part because, you know, it shows that it's not just stuff that I had a long time to prepare that someone else made. If you want me to do something, I can make you something amazing right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you feel like you were justified in leaving? Meaning, it doesn't matter to me because I think you did great yeah. in this competition. Do you think you being sent home for the challenge that you were sent home for, do you think it was justified? Based on the challenge, when I walked out there, I was like, I win, this is me. But hearing the critiques, I was like, you do have a point. And so I'm ready to defend my place here. You know, based on those critiques, I was like, okay. You do realize, I mean, I was devastated when you went home, but the thing with that song in particular, that's probably, if not the, one of the sexiest songs yeah. ever. Yeah. So I felt, me personally, and I have no say in it, Yeah. the cartwheels and all that stuff, it just didn't speak to that song. Right. Which is why. Yeah you ended up going home. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. This is not speaking for Rue or for the show. That's what I can only surmise. Yeah. And I think it's when you just want to give literally everything you have, sometimes the edit. Sometimes it's something. too much. Yeah. And you have to think just like you said, the edit. Yeah. But Ms. Cracker, I am a diehard fan. I am so proud of you. I want you to be honest with yourself, be open with yourself. Yeah. Enjoy everything that this competition is gonna to bring to you. You're one of us, your family, your top five, bitch. You came in fifth like me, holla. And I am so proud of everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with us. I have enjoyed the ride greatly. I can't tell you how much your presence means. And even when you think that you are being mean for your job, I can still, I can still feel I can still feel the love, and I, it kept me going through. Oh, thank you, baby. So. Social media is Miss Cracker. M I Z underscore Cracker, spelled just like the snack and the racial slur. <laughs> okay, thank you, baby. <laughs> thank Until you, Mama. next time, you guys. Thank you for joining me for another What You Pack In. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>